charges are assigned to atoms that are found in a molecular compound. Formal charges may be determined in two different ways, either by a mathematical calculation or by simple inspection. Hi, Mr. B here. In this video, I will explain the two ways to determine the formal charge of atoms that are found in molecular or covalent compounds. Now let's calculate the formal charges of the atoms found in a molecule known as ammonia. For the nitrogen, Nitrogen possesses five valence electrons. In this compound, there are two non-bonding electrons. And there are two, four, six, one half of six bonding electrons. So in this molecule, the formal charge of nitrogen will be 5 minus 2 minus 1 half of 6, which is 3. 5 minus 2 minus 3 is equal to 0. So in this molecule, the formal charge of nitrogen will be 0. And of course, as in the previous examples, hydrogen, the hydrogens are forming one covalent bond each with the nitrogen, so therefore we know that the formal charge of hydrogen in this molecule will also be zero. Do not confuse formal charges with oxidation states. In this molecule, the formal charge of nitrogen was found to be zero, but the oxidation state of nitrogen is a minus three. For hydrogens, the formal charges are zeros. However, the oxidation state for each hydrogen will be a plus one. So the concept of formal charge and oxidation states are really two different concepts. The impact of a formal charge is actually more important when writing Lewis structures of a polyatomic ion. Now let's consider two possibilities for the sulfate polyatomic ion. In the first case, the central atom has a formal charge of one, two, three, four, where sulfur is found in group six, so it has six valence electrons. Sulfur is showing four valence electrons in this structure. So in this particular case, sulfur is showing fewer than the normal amount, so sulfur will have a plus two formal charge. Oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in this case, yet again, the oxygen will show a minus one, since seven is one more electron than is seen on the periodic table. So minus one, minus one, minus one. This means that minus one plus minus one plus minus one plus minus one plus a positive two. So this will yield an oxidation state of negative two. However, the central atom has a plus two formal charge. Not a very, very favorable formal charge. Let's consider this one. Where now, the central atom is showing one, two, three, four, five, six electrons involved in bonding, which is good. So the formal charge in this case for sulfur will be zero. Very good uh, condition so far. Let's consider the oxygens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So once again, one of the oxygens is showing a negative. One formal charge, as will this one. So, so far we have two negative ones for the oxygens. And so the oxygens that are now double bonded to the sulfurs. Let's take a look at those. All right, so for each oxygen double bonded to the central atom, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, six electrons involved in bonding, 
six electrons listed on the periodic table. The formal charge of each oxygen in this case is a zero. Without question, the second example is the most favorable arrangement for the sulfate polyatomic ion. And indeed, the sulfate polyatomic ion will have two single bonded oxygens and two double bonded oxygens. Okay, that pretty much sums it up for formal charges. I think by now you have a pretty good idea of how to calculate formal charges. I think the easy way or the dotted line circle around the central atom way is the best way to do it. However, if you feel more comfortable using a formula, please do so. If you have further questions, please consult your textbook or you can visit my website, wphskemp.com for more information. Okay, have a great day. We'll see you next time.